Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to another tutorial video. This is a colour pencil tutorial. We're going to be going through how to draw fur and I'm demonstrating that on this fox drawing that I did. And so this was part of a tutorial series for my patrons. I did one on how to draw animals like fur, feathers, all of that sort of stuff. So I did a frog, eagle and this fox. So if you want to check that out in real time, make sure you head over to my patron. A link will be in the description and at the end of this video and so what we're going to be focusing on today is mainly how to build up fur without using any other sort of materials like solvent to blend it just using the colored pencils themselves and so I'm going to whiz through the eye here I've sped that up quite a bit just because we're not really focusing on that today the pencils that I'm using are the Faber-Castell Polychromos and I thought I would use some different types of pencils because I've been using the Caran d'Ache a lot lately and a lot of you guys have been saying how you don't own them and you want me to do tutorials with other types of pencils. So the Polychromos are popular so I thought I would use them for this one. So when I draw fur using this sort of technique, there's many techniques for drawing fur, but I'm just going to be discussing one where you just build up the layers using the pencils themselves. So what I do is I look at the reference image and I look at that area of fur and I pick out the base tone. So like the lightest color that goes across that whole of that area. So you can see that at the moment there isn't any fur texture because I'm just basically laying down the colour. I'm just shading it using the side of the pencil just to get a flat layer of colour over that area. And so I pick the lightest colour because it's hard to add light on top of dark, especially with the Faber-Castell Polychromos. So you want to work from light to dark, start with your lightest colour and then build up to the shadowed areas. So the fur near the nose is the shortest, so when you're drawing short fur, you want to keep your pencil strokes nice and short. You don't want to have long pencil strokes near the nose because it will look like the fur is really long when it isn't. And so if you're drawing short, short fur, use short pencil strokes. If you're doing longer fur, use longer pencil strokes. And so what I'm doing is I'm building up to the dark areas. I'm changing the pencils. I'm going darker and darker. And I'm looking at the direction the fur's going in. And I just keep sort of layering that fur. And when you're doing more and more layers using different colours, what this means is that you get a natural look of depth to a fur because you have lots of layers. You have lots of different colours on there. So what you want to do is spend some time doing this. It's not something that you want to rush. You just want to build it up in layers from the lightest to the darkest use some natural colors don't just use one color try to use a variety of colors I think I used about eight different browns on this like orangey sort of auburn browns I used a lot of different colors on this which gives it more of a realistic look because in reality the fur has a lot of different tones in it so the main things to do are look at the direction the fur is going in, try to use a variety of colours and work from light to dark, and look at how long that fur is, and that will determine how long your pencil strokes need to be. So I'm moving on to working on a larger patch of fur at the moment. So again, I laid down a base layer of a really light sort of orangey brown tone. And now I'm going in with a slightly darker colour. I think this was called like terracotta or something like that. And so I'm just building up these colours. I'm looking for the darkest sort of shadows in that fur to get in those structures. I want to give depth to the fur. So what I want to do is I want to look at where the shadows are and get them in those fur strokes in so I don't lose that structure. When I did my initial sketch, I would have sketched in where the main darkest clumps are and the shapes of the clumps because... It is really important to see the fur in terms of like clumps and sections, not as lots of individual bits of fur. They will be going in a certain direction and clumping together. And quite often they won't all be following the same direction. As you can see between the eyes, the fur is going like up and then around the eyes, it's like curving around the shape of the eye. So the fur does change direction. And a common mistake that I see is people just doing the fur in the same direction throughout the face. Like in a larger area, they just do it all in one direction and they change the direction in another area, but they don't really go with the natural flow. Or you could be doing the fur straight. In reality, it is very curved. So as you can see, I've got in those shadowed areas and I'm just shading over and glazing over more colour. You don't always have to be using the pencil strokes for the fur, like in lines. You could just be shading with the side of the pencil to kind of add shadow to a generic area 
of the fur. If you can tell that there's a certain shadow in a certain part of the fur, but it kind of casts across that whole section, then just go in with your pencil, make sure it's nice and sharp, use the side of it, hold the pencil towards the back as well to restrict the pressure that you're applying directly onto the pencil and actually just shade it in and that will create a really nice soft shadow. It won't interfere with any of the texture that you've got underneath it. And even if it does, you can just build on top of it with more and more dark pencils because we're working from light to dark with this. So like I said, the reason we're working from light to dark is because with coloured pencils, it's a medium where you can't easily add light colours over the dark colours. So for example, with pastels, you can go straight over with the light colours and they show up. If you use coloured pencils with solvent, then you can add lighter colours on top of the dark quite easily. Same with if you're using markers with coloured pencil over the top. And lots of different mediums you can work that way, like if you're painting, but with coloured pencils like this, with this technique, you have to try and work from light to dark. Otherwise, you'll find it very hard to try and bring back those lighter colours unless you erase it. But then you might not be able to get the sort of fine details with that eraser. So it took me three and a half hours to do this whole thing. So it is quite a bit of time. It's not too much. I did find this technique quicker out of the ones that I normally use. It wasn't that long to invest in a piece of this size, but you might take longer because especially if you're just starting and you haven't done this technique before, don't feel like you have to get it done in that time. It might take you seven hours or 10 hours, as long as it needs, but just really focus on the techniques. I'm going in with those darker browns and I'm basically doing the same thing over and over again with different colors and different sort of layers and just building it up. And the reason it looks more and more realistic is just because there is multiple layers on there. There's multiple shadows. So I'm adding a bit of black around the eyes and I've added some of those dark browns for those shadowed areas as well, like the Van Dyke brown and I've added a lot of colours. I'll try and link and list all of the colours that I use for this in the description so you can see all of the colours that I used if you do want to try this with these colours. But really, it doesn't matter what colour pencil set that you have. You don't have to have these exact colours. But what I recommend is look at your reference image, get a colour chart out of your pencils that you have and see which colours best match up with your actual reference image. Also on Patreon, I have done like a video about skin tones. I know it's unrelated, but in that series, I do go through how to like pick the perfect colors for skin tones. And so if you do find it hard to pick colors for your reference, then you might find that one useful, even if it is about skin tones. You could apply it to any reference really. When I moved on to the ears, I did the exact same process, but part of the ear was black. So I layered some black and a bit of lighter gray for the highlights. And I basically just do the fur in exactly the same way. Even when it's the grayer fur, I just use grays instead of the browns. So I'm not changing any sort of real technique here. It isn't that different as you go through. It's just doing it over and over again with all of the different layers. As you practice this technique more, you will get even better at it. I've also done another video. If you're not sure on this specific technique, then you might wanna check out some of my other videos where I go through like five methods for drawing fur or lots of things. So you might find that more useful. Another technique that I demonstrated in this is if you want to etch for hairs. So quite often, if you're using like just the colored pencils themselves, there might be some really sort of fine, bright white hairs that you want to get in and you might not feel like you can preserve them. So what you might wanna do is get a little crafting knife like I've done here. And before I added the colored pencil to that area, I went in with a little crafting knife and I just sort of etched in where those little hairs were. And because you've made grooves and indentations in the paper, it means that when you layer the color pencil over the top, the color pencil can't get deep into those like little crevices. And so what it means is you get the white little hairs that are preserved and they show up. So this would look really good if you're doing like an area that's just white hair and it's got lots of those little white, really bright white, I mean, because it's hard to add the color pencil. So really bright white hairs there and you want to preserve them all and so you might want to go in with the knife and do this but the problem with this is that it's hard to see where you've actually etched it you can if you look really close but you might and it's not something you can really reverse because you've already indented the paper you can try and force the color pencil into the groove but you might not get such a 
sort of smooth look as you would with the rest of the fur so it might still stand out but that's something to like try you can do it on a scrap piece of paper see if you like it see if you like the results it is a really great way to get little white hairs even if that's something unrelated to animals if you're doing facial hair and there's some little white hairs you might want to preserve them so it's a great technique for any areas that you want to preserve white but i do recommend it for things like hairs not for large areas because it'll just look weird if you're trying to like etch in a whole section you don't need to do that so i'm just working on this other ear there's a lot of black inside so i'm just layering up around those little etch bits of hair so in a minute we're going to be moving on to drawing the fur around the nose, around the mouth sort of area and because this was grey I laid down some of the grey tones, I kind of just used like the grey one, two, three, four, and kind of as I needed more shadow worked up to the next level of the grey tone and so I just layered that in, I also layered the grey around where the nose is, that kind of curved area, I looked at the contours, the anatomy of the animal is really important, you can't just draw fur everywhere, there's a certain type of anatomy with the face and the sort of nose area of the animal and you want it to look realistic, so you want to look at those shadow, shadows, the way they contour, there's, they might contour in a specific way and they're not just there for the sake of it, those shadows are normally important and the shape of them is important, so really focus on getting them looking accurate before you start to build up all of your fur tone. Make sure that your base tones and your base layers are really accurate with all your shadows and highlights and everything before you start to add all of the detail. Moving on to the longer fur and so with the longer fur as you can see I'm just doing longer pencil strokes. There's nothing more to it than changing the length of your pencil strokes to simulate longer fur. I build it up exactly the same, so I'm first kind of marking in all of the shadowed areas, all of the main direction of the clumps. As you can see, I've kind of done the lines at the moment where all of the sections are either shadowed or where they change direction. So I've got an idea already about the general direction that the fur is going in all over that back part of the fox. One thing that I do want to know from you guys is, are you interested in another do's and don'ts video for colour pencil for drawing fur? I've done one on fur using graphite pencils, but I haven't actually done one for coloured pencils. And so obviously that's a lot different with the technique than graphite. So would you guys be interested in seeing that? Make sure you let me know in the comment section. I'm thinking about making the do's and don'ts videos like a series. So I might do one like every other week using different mediums, different techniques, different like subjects matters because I think they are really helpful it's very helpful to know what to do and as well as what sort of things to avoid especially with realism because it's very easy for something to go from very realistic to more cartoony and so let me know if you do want to see that so let's get back to this longer fur so once I added in some greys tends to be that white fur it was quite white but it was sort of darker so there's a lot of grey in it as well but grey fur may also have bits of colour from the fox itself so it has some browns in it some sort of golden tones it might not just be like that pure grey white it might have more of the brown tones in it as well so don't just think oh because it's white fur especially if it's white fur, don't just think, oh, well, that's just white. Add a lot of grey tones in it first. It is really important to add grey into your white fur. It's not just white. If you want it to look three-dimensional and realistic, then you do need to add a lot of those shadow tones. I find that people, when they're drawing white fur, they're kind of scared to add all of those darker greys because they'll feel like it won't look white anymore. But it is grey. Look at your reference image, get your colour chart, match at which colours best suit it and just use them. Try not to think about what you think it should be like. So I've also added some browns in to also help integrate it from that brown orangey fur on the face into this white fur. It would look very strange if it just went from one colour to the next without any sort of transition, especially because in the reference there was some sort of transition. So make sure that you look at all those subtle little hues in there as well, those brown tinges, the golden sort of tinges. And I also used a eraser to pull up little clumps of fur as well, like little flyaway bits of fur as well. And then I went in and I added some shadow to them. So all of the materials that I've used for this, including the paper, coloured pencils, eraser, all of that sort of stuff will be linked in the description so that you can check that out as well as where you can get it if you want to buy it yourself. 
And so I'm coming to the end of this drawing. I'm just making finishing touches to this, like adding some individual flyaway bits of clumps with the eraser. That is something that I like to do at the end. And I'm also glazing some tone over the fur. If I decide a whole area needs to go a bit more shadowed, a bit darker, I'll just glaze some color and just fix anything that I spot. Another technique that you could use is the little crafting knife to actually pull up and scratch away some of that colour pencil to kind of give some finer details. And you might have seen me use this technique a lot before when I've drawn like hair with portraits and even fur before. And so I will link a playlist where you can check out my other sort of colour pencil animal tutorials so you can see my different techniques for drawing fur because there are many different ones. And so one might work for you and then another might not. And so you need to figure out which technique is best for you. And so you can use that little crafting knife not only to etch details for fur beforehand, but also to create some lighter detailed hairs afterwards. So I will definitely link up some videos where you can see that used in a bit more detail. I'm just adding the whiskers now and I love using the black polychromos to do this because the polychromos hold their point really really well once you've sharpened them to a fine point they are so good and they maintain it for such a long time I don't have to sharpen them that much throughout this process and that's really important because we're drawing a lot of fur we don't want to have to constantly sharpen the pencil because it needs to be sharp so that we can get all of that detail in we don't want to have fuzzy like pencil strokes for our fur that won't look very good we need it to be clear and crisp and so that is why I love using the polychromos to draw animals. But anyway guys, that is it for that little tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you wanna see lots more real-time animal color pencil tutorials, then I've got tons of them over on my Patreon, as well as lots of portrait tutorials using different mediums. So if you're interested in learning how to draw realistically, make sure you check that out. But that is it for me. If you're new around here and you wanna learn even more about drawing, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.